Well, like I said, this is the next to last sermon of the characters of Christmas. You got to come back tonight at five o'clock to find out the other character. So the glorious story of the greatest gift, it just drips with low level characters. Innkeepers, a child born in a barn, dirty, grimy, filthy shepherds making a night of it in the fields. The story reminds me of that old Clint Black song, I Got Friends in Low Places. You ever hear that song? So God comes in the moist, to the moist earthen soil, the kind of dirt that gets under your fingernails when you work in the garden, work in your car, the dirt that's tough to get out from underneath your fingernails. The earth is where the dust from every single step we take clings to our ankles and builds a foundation of filth. I picture creating God with dirt under fingernails an apron with fingerprints smeared with mud in the front of the, ap of the apron and a God so involved with humanity, God doesn't care. God comes to the crusty corners of the world, not the Wall Streets or Rockefeller plazas of the cosmos, not even to the temple in Jerusalem or to a North Naples address. God comes to these friends in low places, the dark of night. God comes to places where people don't want to be where you and I don't want to be found. That dark, the dark of night. There's something so unpretentious about this story. Now, when you've traveled, we've all traveled, we see certain people that get our attention. The loud and the boisterous are like carnival barkers in the corner. And there are some people just so plain and simple that people just pass by them. They're just a face in the crowd. The plain-spoken shepherds capture our attention. They draw us into an unfolding story of salvation with a simple trip to Bethlehem in the dark of night. And in their own down-to-earth kind of way, they influence us with an artful tale in a drab setting of God becoming one of us. This past week, I received a notice in the mail asking, do you want your kids to be social media influencers? The eye-catching title quotes a figure that 30% of kids say they want to be YouTubers when they grow up. That makes it the number one career choice for kids. Whatever happened to firefighter, astronaut, police officer, lawyer, doctor, clergy? What happened to those things? And it's not just the kids, 54% of those to age 34 said their top career choice is being a social media influencer. Well, the shepherds were way ahead of their time. No YouTube, no social media platform. And 2000 years later, we're still talking about this story like it happened yesterday. God comes to each of us in dull as well as dizzying ways. Heavenly glory touches the earth in a barn. Shepherds in the outskirts of a backwater town called Bethlehem, Luke portrays Jesus as an outcast from the moment of birth. Jesus is an outcast among outcasts for the outcast. Shepherds are the first to hear the message of Jesus' birth. They're working the night shift, living in the fields, doing doing one of the most dirtiest jobs alive. And that is to whom God comes. They make the way to Bethlehem as per the angel's direction. The shepherds leave their sheep and gather around the shepherd, and they become the sheep of Jesus' pasture. We might as well think of Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And it's interesting to note that Luke mentions the manger three times in his story. Significant. The shepherds greet Jesus, God incarnate, not only in a barn, but in an animal's trough. God becomes the bread of the world on that night. I am the bread of life, said Jesus. From the moment of birth, Jesus in a trough, the bread of life. 
Jesus is the bread of God which comes down from heaven who gives life to the world, the very bread of life that nourishes our soul. He feeds the shepherds. Jesus feeds the woman who came to the well. He feeds the tax collector. He feeds each of us with our handicaps, our ordinariness and disabilities, nourishing our starving souls for real life. Jesus is so ordinary, we almost miss him. Fred Craddock tells us how upon the death of a saint, those who visited his home after his death were surprised when they went to the house to find the following. They found a broom, detergents, trash cans, old newspapers, an ironing board, dirty dishes, a worn sweater, toilet tissue, a can of tuna, sweet and low, utility bills. They couldn't be, they were amazed that they found this at a saint's house. But that's where God comes in the ordinary moments of our lives. The routine that we live. He is just like us. How hard it is to realize that salvation comes to us limping on human feet. The highest comes to us amid the lowest. Now, Christmas pageants, whether it be this one or the one we grew up with as kids, they have a way of showing our humanity, don't they? How many of us dressed in bathrobes and sheets to play the roles of shepherds and magi and Mary and Joseph growing up? I did. And that's how Christmas comes to us, in the ordinary. We often have no sense of the presence of God. Angel voices are never heard. The thrill of the high, the holy, never enters our life. Angels never appear terrifying us. It just doesn't happen. We read it. We are more terrified by new hymns than angelic beings. We look in so many places to find the holy, to catch the Christmas spirit, that we look in all the wrong places. The, help, help, the shepherds help us see where to look. A feeding trough. An ordinary place where animals are fed, in a barn, in a backwater town. Let us go see this thing that has taken place. For we are the friends that the Lord has in low places. Amen.